You have common sense if you notice there's a world around you not. If you are thinking you can do whatever you want to do, there is only one thing that I know is true about existence. You may think that it's common, it's not so common sense that we're dealing with. Oh, hello there. Hi. Welcome in to Season 3, Episode 19. Everybody, we see y'all in the live chat. We appreciate you being here. I am Lop, and with me, as always, is Sky. How's everybody doing today? Sky, <laughs> have you had a good day? I did. I actually had a really good day. That's, you know, as days go. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up, I streamed, I got to working on another promo video for the nonprofit, doing a raffle. Doing all the fun stuff. Yeah. I was, it was a productive day. I got to sing my music, listen to my songs. Good, well, good day. Good. good day. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, <laughs> I've had a good day as well. Productive, I guess you should say. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to start the show off with an am I the asshole question for you. Yes, always. Yeah? How's that sound? <laughs> good. Oh, uh, wait. Were you just calling me the asshole now? <laughs> Oh. I'm a little slow. I'm just now having my coffee. <laughs> Haven't finished it. Give me a moment. It took him a second, y'all. Yeah. I, I waited patiently. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not. You know what it is, is I get in this mindset right before we start the podcast of like, I get in this work mode mm -hmm. and the the common sense side of me which should be the most prevalent thing when we're doing, you know, the not so common sense podcast, but it's, it goes away. It's like, it, it like I close the door on my common sense side, on my like humor side and everything. I'm like, I'm in work mode. <laughs> makes sense. That makes sense. Does that make sense? So like when, like I, I miss the subtleties of, humor. of my stupidity. Yeah. I get it, but it takes me a second. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm wait, sure wait. I'm not the only one. Um, but here's my am I the asshole question for you, not by me. <laughs> by some lady staying anonymous. Um, okay, she says, my husband and I were invited to a birthday party. We asked if we could bring anything, and the host said it's not needed, but we could if we wanted to. Since I don't like showing up empty-handed, is that bad? I always show up empty-handed places. I do, too. I don't give a flying fuck. Unless you ask me to bring something, I ain't bringing shit. You invited me to a party. What the fuck do you want me to do? I know. I'm just that, I, like, I'm not trying like, to when be... I when I throw a party, I never say, bring stuff. When people bring well, stuff, right. I'm like, this oh, This person cool, didn't thanks, say but... to bring anything. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I never expect people to bring... I expect, as the host, to provide all of the things because I am hosting the party. If I wasn't hosting the party, then I'd be like, hey, no, this is going to be a soiree where you all bring stuff. Like, no, yeah, I don't bring shit. I no. agree. You want me to bring I'm going to need you to bring that that hostility back like <laughs> five notches. Listen, it's because, I, you know, I've been in this situation before where like I've walked to a place and like the person is just like, you didn't bring anything. I was like, you didn't ask me to. They're like, I'm throwing the party. And I said, well, I'm leaving the fucking party. And then I would leave. Because it's like, I don't, you didn't say to bring something, first off. You're the one who was hosting and throwing the party. If it was that kind of party, then you should have said so. And I would have brought something. I have no problems contributing to a party. But you have to tell me. And then to give me an attitude when I get there after you invited me hey, there? but nobody said anything about attitude. All I'm saying is, do you bring <laughs> things to parties? My attitude is going to bring there. My uh, attitude damn, is going to be there. <laughs> Can I get you to chill? Take a nah, lap. Nah. <laughs> <I'll be back. laughs> um, anywho, uh, I, since I don't like showing up any empty-handed anywhere, uh, I thought it would be nice to purchase some boutique donuts from an artisanal donut shop near us. We got a bunch of donuts and one gluten-free donut for my husband who can't have gluten. Side note, no one at the party has any gluten issues. We know these people very well. We got to the party, mm -hmm. and but still, how do you know? Have you asked anybody, everybody at the party? Mm -hmm. Have you asked them all? Do you have gluten? No, do you have gluten? Do you have gluten? Do you have gluten problems? Like, I, I don't know. Anyway, we got mm -hmm. to the party and set the donuts down. 
Immediately, this kid and his mom decided to come on over because, in her words, these are the best donuts in town. Wow, thank you for bringing them, she said. I open up the boxes and immediately the kid throws his hands on the gluten-free one. I kindly said, oh, sorry, I'm saving that one for my husband. He can't have gluten. I picked the donut out and set it aside and proceeded to tell him all the other wonderful flavors that I got. Cookies and cream, Nutella. They have Nutella donuts? They have yeah. cookies and cream donuts? Yeah, bro. <laughs> There's so many good donuts I haven't been to a donut here. place like... in so long. I forget that they even exist. <laughs> They're so good. They had like these maple glazed donuts once that I've had and it just, oh, so good. Well, we're going to have to stop the podcast for a few. I'm going to have to go get a donut now. <laughs> and, but she said she set it aside and proceeded to tell him all the other wonderful flavors, all those great flavors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the kid immediately starts crying because he wanted the one I took away. And his mom proceeded to begin tearing at me and yelling at me for not just giving him the donut. He's just a kid, she said. I was stunned and I immediately just left the situation, went outside with my husband's donut, gave it to him. And I was mortified. I thought she would calm down, but no. (laughs) This lady proceeds to go outside and make a scene about it. A big argument ensued about how I refused her kid a donut. It was comical at this point. I calmly stated my point again that this donut was for my husband who is gluten free and I know no one there has an issue with gluten so her child could have one of the others. This Mm -hmm. lady wouldn't let it go. (laughs) So here's where I might be the asshole. I don't know, because I feel like she's going to do something that I would 100% do right then and there. So let me see. Before you continue, before you continue, if this was me and I was in that situation, me being a mom having a child, uh, I would have then proceeded to go back to the table, grab all the donuts and bitten every single one of them and be like, now nobody gets any of the donuts. Your kid wants it. And then I would have spit the fucking donut down on the floor like a fucking bird and be like, now he can eat my trash just like you. Goodbye. Everybody, and then I would have left. Everybody remind me to never invite Skyler to a party. This Especially is if there's going to be donuts there or if she's expected to bring something. I don't do group settings, man. I just don't. Anywho, this lady wouldn't let it go, so this is where I might be the asshole. At this point, I am sick of her entitlement, so I told her that. I told her that she's an entitled little brat and I know where her kid gets it from now. She starts crying and making a scene and leaves the party. The host, the host and everyone there is mortified and they tell me I should have just handed the kid the donut. My husband sticks up for me and we decided to leave early. Am I the asshole? Nope, not an asshole. And those people would not be my friends anymore. Every single one of you is brainwashed and literally are the reason why we enable fucking idiots like this. This is why people think that they are privileged. This is why people think that they have more of a right than everybody else. There's there's no there's no consideration anymore. And it's because of people just like that. Literally people just like that. Like if that was me and I was a mom and, and my kid went and grabbed the donut and and a person said that, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, baby, try one of these other ones because that one's a special donut. For that person, they can't eat these other ones, but you can. So let's try eating one of these. And that would have been done. That would have been the end of that situation. I would have apologized to the person. Be like, I'm so sorry that my kid even touched it. My bad. You know, I didn't realize that you had something like set aside. Totally, you know, whatever. Like, and that would have been the end of it. But also, as that woman, if I knew that my husband had an allergy, I would have said to the person who was packing donuts, hey, is there any way that we can get like put that one separate aside so I could just give it to my husband? Or just give it to him in the car (laughs) before I got in there to avoid this whole situation because I know people are like that and would do shit like that. Yeah, I would have thought I had, but that's me. I had multiple takes on this and you said them all. (laughs) Because, you know, common sense. Common sense. It's fucking common sense. It, it, It doesn't... There's so much in the world. There's so many things that people like have and so many things. And it's like, for example, when on Halloween... I set aside two different things of candy, like for outside, because my kid was going to go out. He wanted to like give out candy, but then I had to do stuff and whatever. So we set aside two things. I put aside specific bags of candy and I labeled it all. And I said, 
for peanut allergies. So anybody, any of the kids who could not have anything with peanuts, I literally made special bags for them. And on the other side was a free for all, literally more than the other side. And the same thing happened where somebody came in and they were like grabbing both the bags. Like they didn't care. And like, they didn't know I was like walking my dog in the back. And I was just like, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, we're just taking all this candy. Like one bag per person. I'm like, what is what is wrong with you? <laughs> and then they like, they were like, okay. And then they went to go take, um, like as they were taking the one for the for the non peanut whatever the peanut allergy people. I was just like, do you have peanut allergies? Because you were taking both bags. And they're like, well, no. And I was like, okay, but well, that one's for peanut allergies. Can you not read? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, it's all over. There's signs everywhere. Not like, body can't read. <laughs> They were a bunch of teenagers just being assholes is yeah. what they were. But well, like it's 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 just it's that's the mentality of the people around. It's just there's no consideration because they live in their own little heads and they don't think there's a world around them. Yeah. Going back to the the situation uh, and I'm in agreement with our chat as well and you. It, it seems like our live feed they're all saying no, this person's not the asshole and I'm I'm with you guys all on that. However, I do agree that she should have never had the donut in there in the first place mm -hmm. when she brought it inside. That should mm -hmm. have been given to her husband at, before you got there. Mm -hmm. what, did you not come together to the party? Yeah, like how, how did that situation unfold? <laughs> like what happened? <laughs> yeah. And also, I, like, I don't think she should have given it to the kid because... You got to teach that kid you can't just always get everything you want. Like, don't mm -hmm. give him the participation trophy for crying, mm -hmm. you know? However, was it really that important for your husband to have a donut? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. You don't know. Like, maybe he's somebody who has, like, um, issues with, like, glucose or something like that. And that, that particular thing. That's fair. Thing, That's very needs, true. You know what I mean? Either way, I, I think it comes down to you should, they should have separated it before they took it in. And it was like, here, have oh, these, except this one. A hundred percent. But no, 100%. I'm 100%. She's not, I don't, I don't think she's the asshole, even for making the lady cry and leave. What makes, who, you know who the biggest asshole is in the whole situation to me? The who? people that made her feel bad afterwards. Yeah. Everybody in that party. Every single, that's why I said I would find different friends. At that point, I'd be like, you know what? I, I'm petty as shit. When it comes to things like this, if you come at me and I'm trying to talk to you logically and reasonably and then you escalate the situation, okay, you want to go there? I'm petty as shit. Again, I would have like taken the donuts, throw them on the floor, stomp on them and said, now nah, everybody can have them. Goodbye. Don't ever fucking call me. Lose my number. See you later. And that would be the end of that. And I would never see these people ever again. And I would be all over the internet and I would be like, I don't give a flying fuck mm -hmm. because these people are fucking crazy. And if you people are applauding these people, then you are just as bad as them. It's none of that situation was okay for a person. If you're that emotional over your kid throwing a tantrum that you uh, go ahead and throw the same tantrum that your child does, right. you need to seek medical professional for your mental health because you are not emotionally stable. There is something wrong with you. The fact that you have a child and you are that emotionally unfit is terrifying. Well, that is, it is, a hundred percent a teachable moment for that parent. She should yeah. have taken that time to be like, listen, you can't have this donut. He needs this donut because of his medical condition. Mm -hmm. And teach respect. the kid respect and teach him manners and teach yeah. him that you don't just get what you want by crying. Mm -hmm. My right. kid learned that I, like literally before he could even talk. Like, if he threw a tantrum and he was crying because I didn't give him something or I took something away that he didn't have, he would just sit there and cry. And I would just stare at him and be like, are you done? It's okay. You can keep going. You can keep crying. Like, I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. And once he calmed down, I would explain to him as best as I could because he was a baby <laughs> as best as I could. And now he he thinks before he does the certain things. Like, he will, he is the most considerate child ever. Like, I have been praised by by daycare teachers and everybody on how considerate he is. There was one time he was sitting at his daycare on a chair and a person came in and there were no more chairs. And he was the only person, even through all the adults, to get up off of his chair and say, hey, you can sit in here. And he was only four. Yeah. Like, that's that's and they were like that. We've never seen that before. And I was just like, well, shame on you guys for not offering a chair to the other person that came in. Right. But the fact that my kid had to do that speaks volumes. And it's because of what I taught him. Mm -hmm. It's consideration for your fellow person, period. 
well, you are capable and you can, then you do it. You know my stance on it, it, it for the most part, most situations, it all stems back to the parent. Mm-hmm. A hundred percent. Clearly, she was right when she said, I see where your kid gets his whiny little attitude from mm -hmm. now. Mm-hmm. If the mom started crying over the donut situation, are you kidding me? Yeah. You shouldn't have a child. Yeah. You should not be in charge of a human being. Nope. That's terrifying. Because now that kid, imagine that kid getting up and growing up and getting older. Yeah, he's not getting a job that he wants. And then yeah. he's going to re he's going to repopulate with even worse kids. And it's yep. just it's just going to trickle down. And then it's we're going to be where we are today with the economy. <laughs> in this economy, the generational trauma and karma and all of this bad shit. Like it just it's it's funny. I was actually listening to a podcast earlier about that that they were talking about like all these it was uh it was something that had to do with like domestic uh disputes and it's like this this tv show or something where it kind of shows like the people on both sides and it it was he said like it, it was incredible how knowing things that i know now and watching this and watching the way that they were de like degrading each other and yelling at each other and trying to prove their points it's like the programming that they had in their head since they were a kid from their parents and now they're bringing it out onto their relationship. They're like, you could see the programming. You could literally see it being an outsider. And it's terrifying because everybody goes through it. We have all been through it. We've all been programmed as kids, whether it's to have a certain hate for a certain person or a certain kind or to to treat others in a certain way, whether they're beneath you or because, you know, to look at somebody who has money as like, oh, that's an unattainable goal. Like we've just been programmed since we were kids for certain things and then we wonder why everybody around us has all these different views and how they feel but nobody knows how to relate to another person and say you know what let me look at it in this situation and figure out but let me be empathetic for a second and figure out what it's like to be in this situation no matter the situation good or bad hmm. and people just i don't know it's like it's even i've even seen it with people who hate on people who have a good life like it's not the person's fault that they were born into a good life. It wasn't their fault that that person, like that person never seen trauma. And people are like, oh, how dare you haven't been through my life. And my life was terrible. My life was this and my life was that. And, but, but why would you do that to somebody? Yeah, like they didn't cause that for you. Yeah, like if they're having a great life, awesome for them. I pray that nobody has to go through the shit that I went through in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I, I plead every day. I was like, I don't want anyone to feel the trauma and pain that I've gone through. That It sucks. And when I meet people who have like wonderful lives, it, it fills me with such joy because it's like, oh my gosh, another person who's like has light and love in their life and they're, they're, they're going to do great things because of this. Like that makes me happy. Why would I bring my misery into their lives? It makes zero sense to be like, oh, like, well, you should do this this way because you haven't suffered enough. Yeah. The fuck. <laughs> well, like you said, sense. misery loves company. It does. Uh, and it's unfortunate because I'm surprised at the lack of empathy uh, in the world, period. Yeah. Um, individually. I don't know if the younger generation is... is going to grow up with more empathy or less empathy i think the internet <laughs> is making people uh numb yeah the empathy it is the people don't know how to read social cues anymore and it's just well and they there. just don't know they just see something bad happening to something or somebody and they just laugh because even if it happens in a funny way i immediately put myself in the person that it happened to's position Mm -hmm. Or the animal's position, or the little bug's position, whatever it may be, I mm -hmm. that's where my mind instantly goes. Mm -hmm. Like instantly. I'm that when I see something bad happen to somebody or something, that's I immediately am like, oh, that poor thing. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I would hate to be even if it was funny. It could be something as silly as slipping on a banana peel and mm -hmm. you know like nothing great not getting hurt or anything but it was embarrassing like something that simple i'm just like man that sucks for yeah. that person yeah and i and feel I like a that... lot of society doesn't have that mindset and it, it it's scary it's mind-blowing to me it is and i do that like and you know i do this i do it with movies like I know it's fake. I'm aware that it's not real. But like when I see somebody getting hurt in a movie, like I immediately like I feel that and mm -hmm. I, I like I'm in that movie with them. Like I know I'm not, but like 
that I have such a strong empathy that that's what it feels like to me. So I don't like to see it. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't generally like gore and horror and stuff because of that. I love horror for the mystery and things like that. I love the stories, but like to watch people get hurt and like continuously get hurt. Like I can't, I, it just, ugh, it just, it's icky to me. <laughs> I can't yeah. do it. I feel like I feel that pain. I feel that hurt. I feel that sorrow. I feel it all. And I just, I don't know. I feel like people are just numb to that empatheticness. They, they, they don't, it, it, that it's gone from them and they yeah. don't want to search for it because if you start to feel the things around you and feel what other people are feeling, you're going to realize how much bad shit you're doing and nobody wants to own up to that. Why would I own up to me being the way I was and laughing at somebody when, you know, Right. I mean, I think we can all look back. We grew up in the 80s and 90s. Like I've mm -hmm. said before, we're going to be messed up. We've all done things back then that we look at now and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I was like that. Yeah. Like, what I the hell was wrong believe, with me? Yeah. I didn't have empathy for this situation. I didn't, yeah. you know, we were, that's just part of life. You grow up, but you, you eventually you need to grow up and learn mm -hmm. and not do that stuff anymore. And it just blows my mind the amount of adults that never seem to to break that plane. They never get over that plateau. They never they never expand their their I don't want to say expand their minds, but expand their minds. They they did never they never grew that empathy that yeah, part of their brain. That part of their brain. I don't even want to say they never grew up because they can be super smart, very intelligent mm -hmm. people, but they just don't have that empathy side to them they're like i'm a i'm a shark i'm yeah. gonna do you know what i mean <laughs> i'm gonna do what i want to do and it's so funny that you say that because like and i have this argument all the time with certain people because like i i have a lot of intelligent friends in my life and i've always said this to them i'm like you can be as smart as you want you can read all the books you want and have everything of knowledge in the world but the only thing that's actually going to truly make you intelligent is having empathy because you'll never understand anything unless you put yourself in the positions of another person another soul another being another anything anything in this world and that goes for like nature in itself like i i'm very empathetic to things like trees and plants and stuff like when people pick flowers or give me flowers i i hurt for the flowers i'm like I, wh why would you rip it out of its home you just mm -hmm. took it you just uprooted it now it's it's gonna die like it, just leave it there to flourish and and bloom and be its thing and people were like oh you're so weird i'm like it's just empathy it's just come and now we're at a part where like oh no we need to plant more trees because of the rain and i'm like this is exactly what i've been talking about <laughs> I had empathy ever since I was a kid about this. And now that we're all older, people are like, oh, well, <laughs> we should have done that. Well, yeah. it's you y'all thought you ha were smart. You guys thought that you had the best intentions. But without empathy, you're never going to really, truly have that intelligence. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not and there. It's, it's a hard line to walk, the, the empathetic line, as far as what's being too empathetic. What you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, what's being like, okay, at some point you got to draw the line. You can only, you can only mm -hmm. give so much. There's, you know? there's a point when somebody's just taking advantage of your empathy. Right. And they're just like, oh, feel sorry for me. And I tell people that all too. I don't pity anybody. I don't feel sorry for anyone. You're never going to get no. that. You'll always get my helping hand when mm -hmm. you need it. But if I see you at a point where you are more than capable of continuing on and doing for yourself, you're well, going to know and that fixing for me. yourself. You're fully yeah. capable. You, you're aware you have a problem and you're fully capable of fixing that problem, but you don't do it. You just want sympathy. Yeah. You just want everybody to be like, oh, well, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that either. I'm yeah. not going to feel bad for you. I I'm, I'm going that. to, I'm going to feel bad in the sense of, I hate that you're in that situation, but I, I hope, and I hope you can get better. Mm-hmm. Not even that I hope you can't get better. I hope you do get better. Like, I hope you make yourself better. Yeah. You you take that step yeah. to go into the direction. But for me help. to just sit and, and have somebody, because I've had friends like that that just complained about the same thing for years. And I'm just over like, and over. you never do anything to change it. Mm-hmm. You've never, you've never tried anything. It's like it's like they're like taking a hammer and hitting their hand. They're like, oh, yeah. oh, oh. And you're move like, move the hand. hammer. This hand, this really hurts, guys. <laughs> like, stop doing the thing. I know. It's like people going back to their exes, man. Like, I know you're an ex like, for a reason, dog. Yeah, like, <laughs> just eight billion people in the world. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be somebody else. There's gonna be yep. somebody else for you. I promise. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I don't know if that was me. Uh, mansplaining 
but uh, I did want to talk about that. Because, well, we have gatekeeping written down here, and it just kind of it kind of goes hand in hand with mansplaining. And it, yeah. It's my, uh, you had sent me a tweet earlier that where a guy was just giving advice about. Oh uh, my streaming. god! Yeah. It was just a guy giving. A, he was a streamer. A guy giving an advice. He he streams Fortnite, and he was just telling new streamers, "Hey, if you want to come in and try to start growing your channel." Hmm. Maybe pick out a more niche game than Fortnite, mm-hmm. because if you go to Fortnite, you're going to get lost in the crowd. There's so many people. There's yeah. so many people. That's all it was. Well, he started getting hate from people telling him that he was gatekeeping and telling him to not, that he's saying, basically, stay off of my game and don't play my game. And he was just like, it's I, even advice. I'm just giving advice and that's gatekeeping now. Yeah. People, it's, it all comes down to perception. Most people get mad. Well, I'm going to make it big in this and you can't tell me what. Okay, fine. But it's going to be a struggle. And that's what I would have said. I'm like, I'm not telling you not to play the game. I'm just giving you advice of how to be a successful streamer. You can go ahead and play whatever game you want, but you're going to struggle and it's going to be twice as hard for you. And I think you and me have had this conversation when it came to like Apex, Mm -hmm. where I was just like, you know, it's a saturated game. And I've had this with other streamers who played like other games that were like that. And I was like, it's a very saturated game. If you want to grow as a content creator, you do have to kind of simmer down and find something that's smaller so that you can grow your community. Find a niche. Grow your yeah, community find and a niche. then expand to different games. And then exactly. And different, yeah. Exactly. And a lot of people, they just get so irate about that because they want to do what they want to do. And this is what I want to Okay, that's fine. And you nobody's, do whatever that's you want to do. And that's what this guy was saying. He wasn't telling anybody, anybody not to do it. He wasn't yeah. saying don't play Fortnite. But they all came at him and said, so you're saying we just shouldn't play your game that you're wanting to play. You're gatekeeping. You're saying not to play it because it's too saturated. Mm-hmm. No. He's just giving advice. And that's why I said the mansplaining thing, because it feels that way, too. Where's the line on when I'm just explaining something mm-hmm. I, uh, to somebody who doesn't know the thing that I'm explaining? Mm-hmm. And it's when it's considered mansplaining. You what's know what the, it is? What's the, it's, the line? I can tell you where the line is, because this has happened to me multiple times. You know me. I'm If I don't know something, I just, can somebody fucking tell me this? Because I'm just, I explain it to me like I'm stupid, because I need to, like, I'm not uh, grasping it. And I don't care. But it's when people talk to you in that condescending thing. So, for example, somebody, I had said something to somebody about, like, tools once, and, like, how I was going to, like, Home Depot, and I was looking for certain tools. And they were like... Okay, well, let me tell you where certain things are in Home Depot. So you don't want to go to plumbing. You want it's the way they said it, and I was just like, the kind of I've sending been tone. Yeah. to fucking Home Depot. I'm not. I'm just explaining to you that I was looking for a part that wasn't there. Like I already know what part well, I need. Here's my I re- question for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Would this? This was a guy, right? Yeah, it was a guy. Okay. Do you think he would have said this to me? No. Do you think he would have said it the exact same way? Because I have had people say, do that to me. I'll go yeah. to the store and be like, hey, where can I find the whatever? And they'll be like, okay, so this section right here is the paint. You're going to need to go down. I, I know it's the paint. I'm sta- I'm looking at paint. I see it. <laughs> so uh, here's my question. What makes it mansplaining over you're just condescending? You know I what I feel mean? Like, I feel like it's just, it's a different type of tone. Because like, even like... I get what you're saying, because, like, there's even things with, like, women where they do the same thing, especially if you go into, like, their realm where it's, like, with makeup and stuff. Oh, you don't know this beauty Right, no, I've definitely had, working in the acting world, I've had to purchase makeup and things, and I've walked in, and I'm like, I don't know what any of this is. Yeah. They're they're like, well, you need the, what kind of foundation, and what kind of this and that, and I was like, I I I don't don't know. I don't they, even they know. They do it for me on most of the sets. I go in, they do it. Couldn't even tell you what they're putting on me. Don't know. I'm just sitting they're in the chair. monkey feces on Yeah, I couldn't tell you. No. So would that be, be considered woman-splaining? It is. And that's where I say, like, I, I don't like the terms, like, man and woman. Like, I don't like those terms because it, it's more than just that. It is that condescending tone. I think it's just people just, it's, it's the extreme zones of, like, the testosterone and estrogen is like what it is. Like they just think that they're just more manly or they just think they're more women. Like they're more feminine than you are. And then it's just like, no, that's not it. And it's just like, that's just not my area of expertise. Like that's just not the thing that I choose to spend my life 
breaking on. Like, mm-hmm. that's like you coming to me about like animals and stuff. Like, am I animal explaining? Like, am I just like, like, what is that called? Like, I don't do that to you guys if you don't understand something that you're doing with an animal. Like, that's not how that works. Like, if I was a zoologist, like, that wouldn't be the same thing. And, and right. I think that people, they just like to put these tags onto things because it's, it's what the group, it's like this, this, there's a collective and the collective decides, okay. There's a, a giant group of like these manly men who are trying to explain all these things to these women. And then there's like this, this giant group of these feminine feminists that are trying to explain things to these men. And like, there's no, there's no in between, but I feel like we just need to get rid of those terms. I think it's that, not even you're hitting the nail the on the head there. We need to get rid of all those stupid terms. They're yeah, all stupid. Mansplaining, woman's playing. It's all stupid. It's just, mm-hmm. you're either a dick or you're not. Yeah. Honestly, that's what it comes that's, down to. That's literally what it comes down to. It doesn't I matter mean, about your gender, your race, your ethnicity. Your, it does None of that matters. Either you're it. just a dick or you're not a dick. Yeah. Those are it, the it, two. Those are the two. Those are the two rules. And it's so funny to me because I, I feel like a lot of people don't realize that in order for a person, like a human, to be completely balanced all over, emotionally, physically, mentally, all over, you do need both sides of masculine and feminine. That's why couples work so well, because there's there's something that us as feminines, we have more of the side of the brain that the men don't have, and there's something that the men have that we don't have. It's, bi- it's biology. So when you find that balance, it's a yin and yang. But the problem is, is that everybody's too much in extremes and then they try to get into these relationships with each other and try to like mash those extremes and it's never going to work because you're not balanced within yourself if you're not balanced within yourself you're you're just creating a disaster and that's where things escalate to this quote-unquote man's right. and woman's cleaning yeah that's why i'm like this whole everybody needs or we should all be equal and all this stuff i i disagree come at me if you want cancel me i don't care i don't care it, it, I disagree. I, uh, honestly, the fact that a woman is different than uh, than me is what makes me attracted to her. Mm-hmm. The fact that she's not a, a dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that. Like differences are good. Yeah, and we just I gotta put like... them together. Salt yeah. is good. Pepper is good. Put them together. Put them together. It's magical. They're great. <laughs> It's the combination of the balance. And I feel like a lot of people are getting lost of like what what the true fight for equality is. And it's exactly what we've been talking about like this whole entire time of just like a level playing field is all. Yeah. Like the, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. I've seen women who could literally pick dudes up and throw them across a goddamn field. Like I've seen it like these behemoth of women. And I've seen men so small that. They, they they can't do things like that. But yet every guy and every woman has like all these like, no, this is how it is. This is how it is. No, every person on the planet is different. Whether you're male, female, different race, it doesn't matter. We all have our strengths and weaknesses. The equality that I want to fight for is just, hey, just make everything as far as like pay equal. That's it. Like, let's all like play fair with that. But let people do what they want to do based on who they are. Don't mm-hmm. try to stop them because... It doesn't fit your norm just because it doesn't fit your that's called um, evolution. We're evolving. We're growing as a species, as a whole. Everybody can do things that other people can, can't do. I can probably kick a hole in somebody's chest because my legs are that strong. I know guys that don't have as strong of legs that I do. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah, she I'm means not going to be chat. <laughs> I'm not going to be given the same opportunities to do like maybe I want to be a field goal kicker. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But because I'm a woman, I'm not going to have that opportunity when I could probably outkick a lot of people. Well, and and that's where I have like that's where my disconnection is. It's like there's different levels for different things for different people. Doesn't matter what you are. And that's why people are like, okay, well, now I'm just going to transition. Then if I can't do it as this, I'm going to transition and then become a dude or become a woman now. So I can do these things now because apparently I can't do it as me. Well, the problem is we've lost track of what equality really is. Mm -hmm. People think that they say they want equality. And in reality, they want the upper hand. They want the advantage. They want everything to be good for them and bad for the other person. Mm -hmm. And that's not equality. It's, yeah, They're like, people oh, are, I want, I want, it's, you guys have had it like this for generations, so we want it like this now. That's, first of all, I wasn't around generations ago, so don't say mm-hmm. you guys. I didn't, I was, I was no part of anything. 
against women or any other ethnicities, races, anything. I had no part mm-hmm. in any of that. So why do you want me to suffer over things that other people did in the past, the way mm-hmm. society was in the past? That's fine if you want equality. I'm with you. I want it too. I'm supporting you. I'm behind you. Let's let's make things equal. But nobody wants that. No, they just they, want, they want the power. It, they want you to suffer like they supposedly have, even though they weren't around either. Mm-hmm. Or they they just want all the power and mm-hmm. it, it not be an equal level playing field. Yep. And I, I, I don't know that that'll ever be a problem that'll get fixed. I think it eventually will. Honestly, once people, again, it's like what we said before, once we stop and looking and pointing at each other and realize that there's other people that are in control and the ones that are leading the, 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 the fights, the ones that are really leading it. This is another reason why I've made my, my nonprofit extremely transparent because I'm like, I don't want to be one of those people. Yeah, I'm leading a charge, but I'm not going to be one of those people who is leading a charge to have people blindly follow me into a battle where other people are leading these charges and they're just like, yeah, follow me because these are the facts that I found. Yay. And then like, let that, that trickle because like me as a female, okay. Yeah, I get it. I have been in those situations where like, I've, I've had the same job as another guy in the industry. Like I was working in the gym. I was a manager. I had the same exact job. I got paid literally $10,000 less for doing a better job than the other guy. And I complained about it. And I was told that's just what it is. And I was just like, and I'm going to quit. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. So like, I understand it. Like there are certain things that have happened to me and I get that. But at the same time, I never took it as like, you know what? This is, this bullshit is unfair, blah, 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 blah. That's that industry because there's somebody in the corporate ladder who is making it so. It isn't the guy who was next to me who was working. Like right. that guy was incompetent, but that wasn't his fault. It was the people from up above in corporate that did that to me, not him. So yep. I didn't ever took it out on him, and I just peaced out and found somewhere else that appreciated me I for what I my, had to that's offer. That's what makes me so upset about today's society is everybody's taking things out on everybody when these people had nothing to do with things that happened in the past. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're benefiting from this, from what happened in the past. Okay. Maybe How so. How is that your fault? Maybe so. Maybe so. And I agree. I shouldn't benefit over anybody because of certain ways that I look or being male or female. I shouldn't benefit anything from that. I, uh, I've never agreed more with anybody. However, I had nothing to do with that. Yeah. So wanting me to suffer more, wanting me Just to go through the more. negative things <laughs> that you feel like you've been through. It, it, it's something we learned in second grade. Two wrongs don't make a right. Correct. So that's the problem that I'm having with society. I'm all for everybody being equal, but nobody wants it. Nobody no. wants it. They all are just going from one. The, 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 the pendulum is swinging from one side to the other. Mm-hmm. One extreme to the next. And like I said, it, it's going to be a while, but I do see that it's, it's starting to come back and swing again. And it's just it's going to continue swinging back and forth and back and forth until, again, we all find a middle ground and we all come together and we all realize like okay like enough is enough like if we're gonna be equal we're gonna be equal and nobody can fucking complain about it and if you complain about it then you're gonna get thrown into a fucking volcano (laughs) i'm just saying that's that's my where i stand but (laughs) it doesn't make any sense (laughs) it doesn't make sense to me like any of it because it's just like you said it's just it's like you you're being punished for being born and mm-hmm. it's not fair. It's like you didn't do anything. You never once. And like I've said this to people all the time. I'm like, you are probably one of the most compassionate people I've met. Like you are extremely compassionate, extremely empathetic towards your fellow person, towards animals, towards nature, towards other things. But yet you get so much hate for no reason. And it's just like it, it mind boggles me because I'm just like, it, it's not warranted. And I feel like a lot of times it's based off of like just you speaking your opinion, which everybody else is entitled to have, but you're not entitled to. And I never understood that. And it's not fair. Well, I'm I like, think here that's I am. Where my empathy has grown was because I have, I have felt that hate when it was undeserved yeah. from a lot of people. You know what I mean? And for just existing as who I am, who I was born as. I felt that, especially a lot over the last five years or so. Yeah. But even before that, my empathy was up. But now it's even stronger because I'm like, I, I see somebody... And their opinion, whether I agree with it or not, I'm like, you have this opinion for a reason. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Something what, happened. What is that reason? Let me try to understand why you feel the mm-hmm. way you feel. Instead of just being like, no, you're wrong, I'm right. Mm-hmm. And that's the end of the story. That's the, yeah. I think that's the problem. Everybody wants to, they, don't, they just talk to be right. Nobody talks mm-hmm. to learn. They exactly. Just talk to be right. Mm-hmm. And I've had that my whole entire life where, like, I was even told, like, even by, like, my parents, I was told, like, you know, as a a Hispanic, like, you have to keep your head down, shut your mouth, don't talk back, like, anybody else, like, they're from this country, blah, 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 blah. Like, it was, like, and that's why my mom named me what she named me. She wanted to make me as Americanized as she possibly could because she didn't want to give me a Hispanic name. She didn't even want my Hispanic last name. She was just, like, she was trying so hard to make me just this little white girl. Like, seriously, because like that's she that in her mind, that's what she thought was needed to be able to be successful in this country. And for me, like growing up now, like seeing that and understanding that and understanding why she did that, it was like it kind of like it kind of put like a like a damp like right into my heart because it was just like you had I had to hide who I was and like my like who I was born as just to make it in this country. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like this was growing up the land of opportunity the land of gold the land of where everybody could like build but it wasn't that it was the land of the one percent the land of who's in the upper class the land of who's in control and it didn't matter race-wise of what you were because there are so many different races that are up in control and then they control the same people of their own races and saying oh no these people are great no don't don't because they're also benefiting from each other it has nothing to, I'm like, like, I'm like, does nobody see this? Does yeah. nobody see that this is happening? And it's no, just No, I me. think the thing is people see it. I see it. You see it. A lot of people I've talked to see it. The problem is nobody knows what to do about it. No, because we don't have the money to do anything about right. it. And nobody knows once- how to fix the problem. And the, again, you can't fix it when people don't talk to listen and learn, when they talk mm-hmm. to just be right. So I'm here to tell mm-hmm. you guys, shut up and listen. <laughs> just sh- shut the fuck up. Just shut your mouth. Just sh- shut, the shut, shut the fuck up and listen. Okay? You might learn something. Exactly. I just, I don't know. I don't know why people, again, I, th- I really do think it stems down to if they stop and listen and, and realize what they've been doing this whole entire, their whole entire life is wrong. It like, it makes them go back and relive things that they may not want to relive. And it's a hard pill to swallow. And it's something that I had to go through these past four years, like trying to go through my whole entire life and figure out how I got to where I am today. And yeah, you're fucking ripping wounds that you don't want to go through. You you are going down the barrel, man. It's dark. It's fucking dark. But at the end of the day, I came out unscathed. Mm-hmm. And I am such a better person. I am doing so many wonderful things now mm-hmm. that I would have never been able to do if I didn't go back and self-reflect on my whole entire life and say, what were the things that I needed to change that like, I was completely wrong about? Like the biggest one that I have to say, and it's so funny, like my whole entire high school career, everybody I knew smoked pot and everybody I knew smoked cigarettes. And everybody I knew were into like drinking and all this stuff. And whenever I saw my friends do it, I would get so upset at them and be like, don't do it. Don't do it. Like, oh my gosh, it's wrong. Now that I'm older, I'm like, yo, where's the fucking joint? Pass me a joint. I need to smoke a bowl right now because I understand it better. And I was able to change the way that I perceived things and saw things and saw the truth of what it was ex- instead of accepting the lies that I was fed as a kid because mm-hmm. I grew up to see something more than it was. And I think people just need to start doing that with everything in their lives. Like if there's something that just seems really just off, then more than likely it's off. And you need to go back and check to see what it is that you believe about that thing and see if there's more information to learn about it. Yeah, do the research. The, a lazy, there's a lazy component that, that uh, I think hinders people's growth a lot. Yeah. And, the, and it makes me sad because there's so many... I have so many friends of so many different ethnicities, race, genders, you know, mm-hmm. everything. All the communities. I, I've got friends of, from everywhere. And, and yep. they're some of my favorite people ever. And then I, I have other friends, though, or are not even friends, just acquaintances, that mm-hmm. will never be able to meet this other friend of mine because they are, they are close-minded. 
Mm-hmm. They just they think, oh, they're a bad person because of their prejudice. And, and yep. I'm thinking, man, it's so sad that these two people, which have amazing things on both sides, aren't going to meet because of what other people have done probably a long time ago. Mm-hmm. You know, that mm-hmm. didn't involve these two people. If you'd have just put exactly. these two people on Earth by themselves, they would have probably gotten along just fine. Yep. It's the people being swayed by all of the other crap. Mm-hmm. The propaganda that being fed, the things that they are being fed from their family that they've gotten through, like all that stuff. Like I was, I was told to be afraid of like the white man growing up. I was told to be terrified of them, to respect them, to never talk back to them. And I was just like, but why? <laughs> and then right. when I went to high school and I met like all these cool, like all the gingers and I was like, oh, I love gingers. <laughs> <laughs> They're great people. What do you mean? <laughs> I went to the furthest side of the spectrum mm-hmm. that you could have gone. And I just like, I remember well, like no. having this conversation with my parents, like, like telling them, like, like, why would you tell me not to be friends with these people? Because they're so great. And they're like, oh, just wait. Oh, just wait. Like, they was always like waiting for the shoe to drop. And it never did. And I was just like, all right, well, you guys have your belief, but I'm witnessing it for what it is because I took that leap. I took that that chance of like, I don't know anything about this person. Why am I judging them based off something that my parents had told me to judge them about? And why am I listening to them as if they're above me? I'm not saying that they're beneath me, but why am I listening to them as if they're like putting them on a pedestal? Right. I was like, there, there was no sense in that. And that's where equality came from. Like in my, in my mind, I was like, I'm no different than this person. That's where I feel like I was equal. I was just like, I'm, I'm no different than this person. Yeah, he may be a dude and I may be a chick, but at the end of the day, we're still people. We turn off the lights. We're all still people. You know what I mean? Like we all bleed the same. We all have the same feelings. We all go through. We all get hungry. We all have to take a shit. Like we all do the things. I like what you said about how you kind of went to the other end of the spectrum. That makes me want to. to I want to put a challenge out to everybody in the world. If you're somebody and really reflect on yourself, really think deeply of how you really feel about something. If you're somebody that hates a certain group because of what you were taught growing up or what you feel or because you were treated bad by somebody that was like that person. Do me a favor. Challenge yourself to go and spend time with the full opposite end of that spectrum. Mm -hmm. Go and try, if you're somebody who uh, hates uh, trans people, go to a trans event and meet some of them. Talk to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you hate black people, go to an event where you can talk to black people and really get to know them as people. Mm-hmm. If you hate white people, go to Olive Garden, probably. I don't know. Go <laughs> go to a Bon Jovi, bon Jovi concert. concert. You'll be fine. <laughs> you know, like, go, I, I just want to challenge the world to, to just, I don't know, go and, and learn. Just try it and just then, yeah. then reflect and see. If you go and you're like, no, these people suck, okay, but at least you tried. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? At least you genuine, and I, I, that's what I'm saying is put a genuine effort into actually getting to know somebody. Don't go in there like half cocked, ready to fucking. Right. Run, Don't go in with on. you're ready to, I'm right, you're wrong, I hate all you people. And, uh, no, that's no. Go in and be like, okay, I'm going in clear minded right now. I'm just going mm-hmm. to meet and talk to people. Mm-hmm. And if political parties would do that, that would be if, if people would do that on the political spectrum, that would solve so many problems. I know. If people oh, would, would just go in and just hang out with them in a non debate situation, just mm-hmm. let's take all these Trumpers, all these Bideners, and let's put them all in a room. Don't tell anybody who's for anybody. Mm-hmm. Have them just, have, just conversations. have conversations. Mm-hmm. I've met so many cool people by just by just that. And I think sometimes, like, I thank God that I live in, like, a, a very large city where I was able to, to experience all these different cultures and all these different people and all these different things. I've met so many cool people, but I've also met so many fucking douchebags. And mm-hmm. it's just, like, it's just, it is what it is. That's just the world and the way it is. And I feel like people... Once we realize that at the end of the day, we're all one, like we're all the same. We're all across the board, everything like what happens to me 
affects the things around me. What happens to you affects the things around you. And it just, it extends because again, it's all energy. So it all extends. So like the more you think about it, if you start bettering yourself, it's going to eventually get better around the world. Everything else, like all these, these fights and wars and things, they eventually will stop, but people don't want to look within themselves and start fixing the wrong that they've already been programmed to have. But instead they just, they outwardly express it. And that's where this chaos is coming from. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to look within. It's the, it's the programming. You hit it, hit the nail on the head. It's, it's people are programmed. We're yeah. programmed from the second we're born till we die. We're yep. programmed. It's up we to have you. the power to change yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to say, it's up yeah. to you whether you, you just absorb all of that and accept it for what it is, or you challenge it. You question mm -hmm. it. I personally, I question it. I may not act on it, but I question it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, if somebody yep. tells me something, I may in my head be like, I don't know. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> you know? I don't know and I, I may just let them tell me, you know, because there are, you've got to pick your battles. Yeah. Because there are people that you just can't have conversations with. And all you yeah. can do is just hope that they eventually learn. Mm -hmm. You can tell them what you want. Most likely they're not going to listen. Uh, but I think constantly questioning everything is the right thing to do. Yeah, especially nowadays. I'm not That's saying don't do them. anything. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not saying just to because somebody says something that sounds a little weird to you. I'm not saying don't do it. Don't be don't listen to it or don't agree or believe it. I'm just saying question it. If somebody's like, oh, yeah, you, I can throw this football the full length of a football field. Don't I, don't say no, you can't and walk away. But just be like, OK, how 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 can you do that? Yeah, cool. Show me. <laughs> That's yeah. usually my go-to. It's like, really? Cool. Show me. Right. And then well, when they even, can't not do even it, I'm that. like, Aw. But it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You could just be like, oh, I believe you, but how? Yeah. You Show know? me how. How, me how. Did, did, you, did you work at this for years? Is this something you've, uh, this, is this a goal? But like, how? So that's what I mean when I say question things. I don't mean question it as in they're wrong. Just question it as in to learn more about it. Exactly. If that makes any sense. <laughs> In the totally famous words sense. of Sky. <laughs> it always makes sense. But it kind of like, it's, it's funny too that you say that too, like to question how, because there's certain things and I'm, I'm starting to learn this. And I know you're, you got your, your feet so firm on this stance, but there are some things that just don't fucking make sense, man. There, it just, maybe one day, one day it'll make sense. But as of right now, like, I can't make sense of some things. And I'm just like, I just have to accept this because this is my reality right now. And maybe one day I'll understand it. But right now I can't. And I can't spend my time trying to make sense of something that I'm not meant to understand at this moment. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll, I will, but right now I can't because if I do, then nothing is going to get done. And I'm just going to be sitting here struggling. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? It's fucking happening. It's just, right. <laughs> I just, it is what it is. Well, like, okay, like those people <laughs> in the submarine that, that imploded uh, last year. Oh, God, year. yeah. Nobody thought to question that when he said, oh, it's safe. What do you mean? Nobody mm -hmm. questioned that he's driving this thing with a, an Xbox controller? Yep. Uh, that's what I mean, guys. You don't have to just blindly believe everything. But, yep. And you don't have to blindly disagree with everything. Mm-hmm. Just ask questions. Yeah, just ask simple questions so you have a basic understanding of what is happening. That's all. It's very simple. I do it all the time. People get annoyed with me, but I do it all the time. <laughs> well, that leads me to another thing I have written down here. Uh, it's okay to be wrong. Yeah. People are not able to accept that lately, no. I've noticed. Like, or yeah. ever, really. But I've really noticed it lately. People, I don't know the last time somebody has said to me, yeah, you're right, I'm wrong. You're right, I'm wrong. <laughs> hey, I'm I say sorry. that all the time. I messed up. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't count you. But like <laughs> just the general public. I, I don't think I've yeah. I've heard and I say it all the time. I tell yeah. people all the time. No, you're right. You're right. No, I'm wrong. Uh, sorry, I was wrong. I messed up. Yeah. And there's when nothing wrong up. with that. Yeah, when I fuck up, I admit it. I'm like, oh shit, I fucked up. Like We're my bad. Human beings. <laughs> We're going to mess up. 
<laughs> Why are people so afraid to admit that? I, it's, it's, it goes back to just that intelligence factor. It just, if they're wrong, then it means that they're stupid, but it, it's not. It, it's just, again, it's growth. Because at one point, we were all wrong about something in our lives. We were all wrong about some information we got. And then we went to school. And then we learned. And then we went to the real world. And we learned more stuff. Like, when we were kids, there were so many things that we thought that we had to do. As like, the, the one meme I think I put it in there was just like, you know, the one thing I didn't realize was when I was an adult, I had to buy food then cook the food, then eat the food, and then go back to the store to get the food that I had just eaten and replace the food to then cook no food all over again. And it's like things like that where people are just like, they don't realize like how much different things are from like growing up each and every year, every step of our lives. It's, it's, it's growth, it's learning, it's, it's, it's expanding, it's extending. And I feel like people don't want to take that into consideration and they just think it's, oh, well, that just means I'm stupid. No, it doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means that you haven't learned that yet. And you're going to learn it if you want to learn it, but you have to be open to learn it. And if you're not open to it, then yeah, you are stupid. <laughs> if you don't want to learn it, you're fucking, you're an idiot. I'm sorry, but you are. Yeah. That's, that's all it is. Like once you stop yourself from learning, because you don't ever stop until the day you die, you don't ever stop gathering information ever. Right. The minute that you refuse to do so, you're a fucking idiot because now you're a slug. You've turned into a slug and you don't want to do anything anymore. You just want to slug around, which is fine. But don't bring anybody else down with you. Don't right. take it out on anybody else. Say, that's fine. You want to be a slug, go be a slug. Nobody cares. Yeah. But don't use that slugginess to, <laughs> to fight arguments with people and to exactly. cause problems with other people. Just because you refuse to ask questions and learn. Like, that's, that's the takeaway, I feel. Yeah, that's a good takeaway. Well, that's our episode, yeah. everybody. Why does it keep happening so fast? So fast. Such a great episode, though. We didn't get though. to conspiracies again. We didn't get to conspiracies. We will get to those <laughs> next week, everybody. <laughs> I, I, I promise you we will try our best to get to those next week. Uh, we, have, we have some good conspiracies for you all, too, I promise. And uh, I think you'll like them. But we'll get to those next week. And uh, we'll be back, what, Monday? The whatever that date is. Yeah, Today's the 8th of April, but it will be our <laughs> final episode of the season. Episode Woo! 320. 320 Woo! episode, final episode of the season. I'm not sure on if there will be a break between seasons or how we're going to handle that. We haven't figured out all the details on that yet. We will let you know on the next episode, so be sure to listen. I don't want you guys thinking we just disappeared on you if we take a break <laughs> or anything like that. We're yep, here. Yep, yep. You can reach us on all of our social media. Definitely follow us on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, all the T's. Just follow all us on all the T's. Cross all your T's. Uh, all but interact with us on there, too. Ask us things uh, that you want to know about, any questions you have, uh, any advice you may need. Tell us some embarrassing stories about yourself or fun stories or terrible stories. Just tell us about you. We want to learn about you so we can reflect on it. And like Sky said... If you want to stop learning, you're done. We don't want to stop learning. We want to learn about you guys as much as possible. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, definitely mm -hmm. reach out to us. We're always available to somebody will get back to you in a pretty timely manner. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. we just appreciate everybody. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, please, please, please get over there. You can leave us a five-star review, which helps us tremendously. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, as far as the other podcast stations i'm not sure which ones you can do reviews but if there are any and you can uh you can leave them for us it really mean a lot guy and i appreciate it this guy is there anything i'm missing before we head out no i think you nailed it all all right Diggity. what i do <laughs> uh but yes everybody in the live chat appreciate it if you listen to us going down the road look out there's a bird guys we will be back next monday 7 p.m eastern for our final episode of season three one thing to always remember, until then, read the room. room.